Cheers guys, Nico here, co-creator of New Capital and I'll promise you when you watch the video until the end you will be able to create your own trading strategy without any prior knowledge. You for sure already heard about the website builders such as Jimdo or Wix where you can create professional websites without writing a single line of code. Same stuff we are going through here today. You will for sure already have kind of a trading idea and at the end of the video you will be able to simply put this idea into practice, apply it on the financial markets without learning coding. Caveat of this video is I will also give you access to the source file of the trading system, the strategy we are developing step by step in this video and you will completely understand it. You will see the DNA, literally the building blocks of this strategy and you can enhance it, adjust it absolutely to your liking and also build completely new strategies because this video's intention is to not only give you the fish but also the fishing stick and the whole pond and to make you completely independent from people like like me and from videos like these. Cool, then without any further ado, let's head into the video. Let's get the basics straight and develop your very first trading bot step by step. Cool, first things first, let's cover the basics. Talking about trading bots, also called expert advisors. Pretty simple what expert advisors are. They are decision trees, put it in codes more or less. So you have a trading idea, a trading rational, such as very simple like Let's go long enter a position on a Monday at 8 a.m. on Euro USD. If this condition is met, right, as soon as time approaches and you got like 8 a.m., you enter. That's like the trigger and it's a very simple yes, no decision. And as you can see, the decision trees can be way more complex and way more sophisticated in the end. But this is yeah, what a trading bot is doing in its very basic. It is more or less like like a traffic traffic light, right? It's looking for, is there a green light? Is there a red light? And if there's a green light, let's go either to the next condition, let's check, is it true, is it false? Uh, and ultimately entering and exiting trades. Trading bots, also called expert advisors, are pretty much just a piece of code. So you can trade every asset you can imagine or, well, differently put, your broker offers. That is the only bottleneck. So you simply check up front what your broker is offering. So you can trade currencies, cryptocurrencies, futures, stocks, ETFs, indices, and so on and so on. There's pretty much no limitation. The only limitation is pretty much what your broker got to offer. And in the end, we are also talking about, well, a system that is running 100% of the available time you can trade such an asset, right? Such as cryptocurrencies are available 24-7. So your trading bot can also trade the market cryptocurrencies 24-7. When we're talking about when we're talking about currencies, about the forex market, then we're talking about a 24-5 market, but it's trading 100% of the time fully automated thanks to the trading software. Maybe another important thing to mention is that expert advisors, most of you who are watching this video probably already saw the possibility to buy ready built software, right? Such as on the MQL5 marketplace and whatsoever. So you pretty much buy into a system which is being sold by a creator and you simply have to believe the backtest results. You have to believe that the provider is not a scammer and yeah, you have to believe the trading rational is the actual trading rational. But normally what the case is, is that let's say 95% of the offer trading software out there, are mostly black boxes. What does it mean? A black box is you don't really know what the system is doing. You have to guess and you have to put your faith into the system and simply, well, have to trust the piece of code or the provider behind the software. That is a little bit problematic in my point of view, because when you buy such a system for let's say 50 bucks, 500, sometimes even 5K, you really want to know what it is doing and what not, right? That is also what is leading me now to the next chapter, which is the no coding building platform. You probably, you probably know like the website builder, such as Jimdo or Wix, you, where you simply drag and drop blocks or pre-built templates onto your builder and then you can pretty much build your website like a pro. Same stuff is happening with investment strategies. You only need the idea in your head what kind of investment strategy do you want to code like the simple simple thing I already mentioned such as on every Monday morning I want to enter long on this asset. I mean it is as simplistic as it gets 
And normally even that very simple trading strategy, trading strategy requires a lot of knowledge in how to code it up. And you need to go into hard code, you have to write, write it up, maybe punch in some libraries you found on the internet when you want to enhance it. But with the builder, which I'm just presenting to you, you don't need this. You skip the part of writing hard code. You can dive right into building your trading strategy, such as Jimdo or Wix for websites. It is FX Dreamer for investment strategies. And the overall goal of today's video as well is not only handing you over a black box, which I already mentioned to you, right? Like a trading software expert advisor, and then you just apply it on the markets and you hope for the best in the end. No, the goal is that I teach you how to actually create these trading systems yourself and also to critically challenge the systems, these kind of black boxes of those providers and just pick the right systems for you, for yourself and not getting scammed. So the goal of this video is also making the overall yeah, trading bot market environment a little bit safer. So that's why I like this quotation here that what I'm trying in this very short video actually, not only handing you a trading system, aka a fish, actually also yeah, a fishing stick and teaching you how to fish yourself so you can be independent from people like me on the internet who are telling you this and that and being dependent on those sometimes sketchy trading bot providers. Cool. So much for the EA. I already went to the FX Dreamer intro. That is pretty much how FX Dreamer looks like. And yeah, it is pretty much built like a decision tree in a, in a decision tree logic. So now let me quickly introduce you to FX Dreamer. Here on the left hand side, you see all the different blocks. So when I, for example, open this one, you see here are the condition blocks. I can simply drag and drop all the time filters with which you usually usually start your trading system, your decision tree, right? Such as once per bar, you want to put it on the very top. As you see it here in the pre-built system, I already coded up. So this is like the building section, all the building blocks. Constants, variables is actually a topic on its own. I will also brush over this later on in this video. Very, very important to enhance your trading systems and get them to the next stage. Then you also see these tabs. To keep it simple in the beginning, I know it is overwhelming in the beginning, such as Excel, right? Like Microsoft Excel, in the end, when you get a grasp on it, it's natural and you understand it and you can do magnificent things with it. Same is happening here with FX Dreamer as well. Um, but for the beginning, I think it is wise to really focus only on the most important stuff, which is the tab on timer and on tick and even for the very beginning just focus on on timer like all the other tabs on trade on chart on day in it on in it ignore it just let's stay on timer that much to that section and you see here these tabs also simply for the beginning ignore it but important here projects and then those four options load project new project import actually the last one you can also ignore like load project. When you've built already something in the past, you can simply click on this and you see I already built some and then you can simply pull it up and continue your project from the past, what is quite handy. Then the next one is new project. When you click on it, you simply keep it here on expert advisor, script, ignore it. And I would highly recommend to go over to MetaTrader 5, MQL5. It's the newest and most updated coding language for MetaTrader. So let's simply punch in test YT, click create, and then you see your canvas goes blank. You yeah, start a, a project from scratch pretty much. I think that's pretty decent. Let's go back to the prior piece. And then the next one is import project. Also very important because here you can simply import projects which you have as MQ5 as a source file. So for example, when you want to have an exchange of thoughts with fellow traders or algorithmic traders, you can simply share it, they can download it, and then you, they can upload it into their own FX Dreamer and continue building it. Such as, for example, Tweezer Trading Bot MVP. I double click on it and you see it's instantly loaded into my FX Dreamer. So again, let's go back to the script because this is the system yeah deep diving in today's video i'm gonna explain the trading ration and how to build it yourself i will explain it step by step and yeah 
pretty much at the end of this video, you will have a re ready built trading system and you will be able to recreate it and to build way more fancier and more complex, sophisticated stuff. However, keep in mind, just because you can build something more complex doesn't need to be, doesn't mean to be that it has to be like this, like the simpler, the better, keep it sophisticated, simple, especially in the beginning, you don't want to overwhelm yourself with like super complex stuff and then getting frustrated and then stopping out of nowhere, right? Before I will explain these two remaining buttons, let me quickly talk about these building blocks about this Canva itself, right? As I already mentioned it before, FX Dreamer, trading software, is comparable to decision trees. And you see, well, that kind of looks like a decision tree. You see at the top, we have a once per bar. Block simply means once per, for example, hour. We will check the blocks below and it's happening also in this order how it is connected. So when we check the condition block, which you will find here, let's check it out. We simply check if the candle clause with the candle ID number one is higher than the candle with yeah, the, these parameters without getting into details. Let's say the condition is true, then the orange connection is being triggered and the next block, this one, is being checked. So here, candle clause number two, smaller than candle ID four. If that is true, great, same stuff happening. The orange connection is being triggered and so on and so forth. If the condition is not met, the yellow connection will be triggered. In that case, it's not connected to anything, so it won't do anything. That much to the logic, how the majority at least of those blocks in FX Dreamer are working. Cool. So far then now to the builder, to the canvas, we will deep dive into that later on as well. Let's quickly talk about these remaining two buttons, MQ5, the source file. I already showed you what it means. You can simply export it and you can share it with fellow traders and they can import it into their FX Dreamer and continue the project, enhance it whatsoever. And talking about the EX5 execution, five file simply means that this one is actually yeah, functional in MetaTrader 5. So let's quickly save this one, which we gave the name the script 101. We will save it. Uh, let's see, we put it in downloads and here it is, the script 101, we copy paste it and we go over to MetaTrader 5. So that is now the introduction to MetaTrader 5. Let me do it like this. So for sure in the beginning it is it might be a little bit overwhelming, um, I have to admit, but you can pretty much ignore all of these buttons here in the upper corner in the beginning. They are not super crucial, super important, and you will get used to it over time. However, for now, I will simply, yeah, blend them out to make it a little bit nicer and easier to see. Cool, so what you do next is, let's put it like this, you click here in the upper right, upper left corner on file, you click open data folder because now we want to get our ready trading software into MetaTrader 5, right? Because we just no coded it in FX Dreamer. So we click on MQL5, experts, quick and dirty. We just copy paste it here. You see the script 101, but you see here in the navigator, if it's not there yet, you click on view and you click on navigator. If it's not there yet, you simply right click on this section, you click on refresh and you see the script 101 is popping up. That is how you import yeah, a trading bot into MT5 from FX Dreamer. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Cool. Now you see I already have this window open, which is called Strategy Tester. If it's not open yet in your MT5, again, you click on View and you click on Strategy Tester. Then this window is popping up. And since we already clicked on refresh, you see our bot is popping up here. It's the same list, the same order as you see it right here, the same folder structure. So we just double click on the script 101 and you see in the inputs, there are no inputs because when we go back, the inputs are the constants. The constants is topic later in this video, but there are no constants except you see the magic number, but you can ignore the magic number for now, not so important. Let's quickly walk through the strategy tester as part of the MT5, MetaTrader 5 introduction part. Here you choose the expert advisor trading bot, what we just did. Here you can choose the symbol asset, such as an ETF, cryptocurrencies, a normal currency, normal currency, a stock whatsoever. Here in that case, I chose EURUSD. Here you can choose the yeah time period on 
what you want to test on, right? For the last five years, four years, whatever. In that case, I will start it from 2021. Then forward test, just keep it on no delays, keep it on zero latency modeling, keep it on every tick to have it as precise as possible for now. And let's keep it th simple. And if you feel like it, also tick the box here, profit and pips, it will fasten up the back testing experience. It's not gonna be as accurate. It's gonna exclude all the commissions, but for like satisfaction of having a big back test, a quick back test, I mean, then just tick the box here. You can say how much money you want to back test on in that case, 10K, the leverage, just keep it all by default on these values. And I will also test it in visual mode. So that is very handy because then you can actually see what is happening, what is coming in quite handy just to see if the system is doing what it is supposed to do. And here we are, the system is now running and the first trade is already taken. And yeah, that's pretty much how you can, for example, give it a quick rational check if the system is doing what it is supposed to do. Let's see, we are testing on the one hour, but the chart is also on the one hour. So let's quickly go back. The first trade always takes a little bit longer. As you can see, it is loading right now because of the calculation behind it. As soon as it's done once, weirdly, it is running very, very smoothly. So let's get some examples in. Cool. So what you already see, maybe we find a nice example. Yeah, somewhat. So the trading bot we are talking about today is based on price action. It is based on morning stars, evening stars. So it's like in its base about three candles. I will talk about it later on. And but yeah, what I see so far in visual mode, it is doing what it is supposed to do. So green lights on that instance. And let's actually dive right into the script. We call it a price action trading system and as mentioned as we're talking about the morning star evening star which at least exists out of three candles you see it right here so when we're talking about the morning star which is a bullying reverse pattern so when this appears we expect the price does not continue anymore for example in that case to the downside we expected that the price now reverses and goes up and yeah goes bullish pretty much pretty much the same stuff for the evening star but the other way around i think that is quite straightforward so we're talking at least about three candles and for example if the evening star pops up so we see like three candles on this candle we would enter short on this candle open we would enter long cool so that is i would say the only piece of code i mean of a more formal representation of the morning star you see how we define the morning star is a little bit different. We look back up to six candles in the past. Why six? Well, you see these numbers, right? Six, one, four, two, three. These numbers are referring to so-called candle IDs. Let's quickly talk about candle IDs. So here you see the chart, Euro USD daily. Let's say today is Wednesday, 2 p.m. So we still have some hours left in the day. So the candle is still in development and can look very different in the past. In, in the meanwhile, until the day is closed, Wednesday. That's why this one is called candle ID zero. So Wednesday, yesterday was Tuesday, yesterday, this is the candle for Tuesday, and this is getting the candle ID number one, Monday is getting the candle ID two, it's Euro USD. It's not open usually during the weekend, at least here on that chart. So that's why candle ID three is a Friday, for Thursday and so on and so on. So you get the gist pretty much. That is what these numbers are referring to. And you also see the morning star, we have four conditions. For example, let's go to the second condition. Let's say the first one is met, it's a bit more complex. The second one is pretty straightforward. You see the candle clause of the candle with the candle ID number two, gotta be smaller or lower than the candle clause with the ID four. So let's repeat this. What does it mean in plain English? You see it right here. The second last candle close closed lower than the fourth latest candle close. That is pretty much the yeah text version of that formula. Same stuff or similar stuff for the evening star. You see we even have more conditions and here we are only looking back up to the fourth candle in the past. So here, for instance, one of the conditions is that the candle close close with the ID one got to be lower than the candle open of yeah, candle ID one. So the same candle, right? 
So cool. Now we see like this text form from some people it might be straightforward who are maybe familiar with like Excel stuff like this or SQL and, and so on. For others, it's maybe a little bit too abstract. That's so that's why I would like to refer it to here FX Dreamer since this is pretty much the script put into blocks, building blocks, literally building blocks. And what you see here just in plain English or kind of kind of code, you could say, right? So let's see. Morning star, second condition. You see here the condition block. We got the candle, candle close, candle ID number two. Got to be smaller than candle close with the ID number four. That is the same stuff as you see here. You will also get access to this source file. So you can import it into FX Dreamer yourself. And then you can really go piece by piece through each block and get an understanding if it all makes sense, right? So the next one, candle close four, got to be smaller than the candle close number six, you see it right here. That is how it's supposed to look like. So when you are like training, what I would suggest you is, for example, putting this to the right and without looking on this part, simply really building the system from scratch. So let's say you start with the ones per bar block on top. And let's say this one is a bit more complex. So for, for the beginning, you just copy paste it. But the second condition of the morning star is quite straightforward, right? Close two got to be smaller than close four. So what you do, you go here on the condition block, you double tap on it. And now you see, oh, where's the candle, right? But this is like the default condition block. So you got to change it. You click here on this drop down. you click on candle, you wait for a second. And just to double check, right, what you can do later, you simply see cool candle close candle ID number two, you see by default, it's always zero. So you punch in a two. This one has to be changed to smaller than candle, candle close. So that can be kept like this candle ID. I think it was four, right? Whoops. Yes, indeed. <laughs> cool. So you click on update, you connect those two blocks and you continue with the third condition until you have rebuilt the whole thing here on the right side. And then you really got a grasp on it, right? So again, you will get access to the source file so you can make sure that everything is correct. And you can also, that is the beauty, right? That is why I was talking about the black box. You actually see literally the building blocks, the DNA of the trading system. It's absolutely no black box because you see every single command, every single condition, and also how positions are being entered, right? For the morning star, you enter long, you see the buy now block here, which you find here on the left hand side, drag and drop. And you really, really understand what is happening there. Like, why is the stop loss there? Why is the profit target there? Why are we entering at this point of time, right? So I think that is pretty decent. And I would also suggest to you to do the same stuff for the evening star here on the right hand side, even though it is a little bit more complex. But when you have recreated this system yourself, you will truly understand how to build also more complex stuff in the future. Now, before we go to the next chapter, which is about constants and variables, quick side quest about indicators, particularly about the indicator, which is called ATR, the average true range. Best practice is to use such an indicator, for example, for the stop loss, because it's a dynamic. Yeah, it's dynamic, first of all. And for example, when the volatility in the market is higher, the ATR is adjusting accordingly, and you will also have a bigger stop loss. So what, what does it mean actually? You see here on the chart, EURUSD, daily candlesticks. And you see right here how price is moving like more extremely into one direction. You see also the candles are getting much bigger. And that is where the ATR is like very, very useful. It's not saying in what direction the market is going, but the ATR is looking back on the size, on the average size of candlesticks. So when the candlesticks are getting bigger, it implies that volatility is higher. That's why it's more beneficial having a bigger stop loss, right? For example, when we have presidential election days, volatility might be higher. And then when you have a fixed stop loss of let's say 20 pips might be too small, you might want to have a stop loss, which is sitting at 50 pips. And the ATR is just doing that. For example, you see here, when the ATR is quite stable around, I think it's 50 pips. It's pretty small to be honest, but let's say 50 pips. And now here it's actually increasing and it's going up to 100 pips, 50 pips. Might be a little bit too big actually, but it's just like an extreme example how ATR is adjusting. And yeah, the ATR is a great way to be used as 
as a way for the for the stop loss. That's important because we use the ATR as you see it here in the building blocks. Not yet. So you simply see we simply place the stop loss here on the lowest low of the past three candles. But this is leading me new now to the new chapter, which is about constants and variables. So we're talking here about these two tabs. When I click on it, you see this window is popping up. We can add constants and variables. So I already prepped this one and you see this is the same system which we have seen before, but now we have six constants and one variable. Let's start with the constants. The constants are pretty much just an enabler for you to change stuff within MetaTrader 5 without the need to go back to FXDream, adjusting something in the system, exporting it, uploading it in MT5 again, and then you then you will see what actually happened. Now, for instance, you can here change the time frame, such as the daily time frame, to one hour and the position sizing from 1% to let's say 0.5% within MT5. So what does this mean in reality? We will just simply export this one. And you see, as soon as we upload it here in MT5, we go to inputs and then all those constants are popping up and I can very conveniently change the time frame. for instance, from one hour to four hour or to the daily time frame. Also same stuff for position sizing instead of 1%, maybe I wanna risk more, 2%, 2.5, or 0.5%. Same for the target, right? Maybe you wanna go for a one to three risk to reward, or maybe you wanna have a smaller target such as one to one, you risk $100 and your maximum upside is also $100. So that is pretty much the use case of constants. Let me quickly show you how you can add constants yourself so you can do it yourself in the future. That is how it looks like when you add constants. Just a quick comparison. This is now where we add constants. This is the old system no constants and you see here the time frame is by default set on current current is simply referring to mt5 to this field so you can exchange the time frame actually here on the mt5 it's still manual and also not scalable for the back testing process which i will show you later on so now we go back let's click here on condition and let me quickly show you how you can add the time frame let's just quickly get on the candle page and for example now you added the time frame constant how you can do it i mean once again you get also access to this source file with the constants and variables and you simply here right click on it and you click on time frame now you did it there you have to do it for every other single block as well so you update it i don't do it here yet but you see i did it for every block i added the constant time frame so you can manipulate the input here via MT5 platform. Mm. The only thing you have to consider when we're talking about time frames, you see the type is different. That is something what you have to consider. You simply copy paste this here in Noom time frames into the column type and the rest like 99% of all the other constants you are using are based on double. So that is really just a unique thing when you add time frames, you have to add this kind of type and also this kind of structure period underscore D1, for example, for the daily time frame or for example, the one hour time frame H1. That's the only challenge for the constants. And that is now leading us to the variable section. The variable section is a little bit different compared to the constants since the constants, as the name is saying, staying constant, once they are defined and the system is running, you cannot manipulate these values. For example, what do I mean with it? Once you define the constant to be one here, so 1% of your account, you want to risk per trade. I mean, this setting is set, right? It's, it's running throughout. When we're talking about variables, variables, its nature is that they keep on changing. So you see here, I got the variable ATR. When you add a new one, the default value is always zero. So that's why it's also zero. And I would say 99% of all cases, you can also keep it on zero. Now I already pitched to you the idea of having the ATR as a stop loss, right? So now I added different kind of like quite useful constants here already before. And you see here now, instead of having the prior stop loss of like just checking the lowest low, highest high, I'm actually using the ATR, which I explained to you before. Uh, you see, let me quickly show you how you can 
you can recreate it. You simply drag and drop the buy block. Let's just go to the stop loss mode and I will use the custom price fraction variable. And here you punch in the variable. So you right click on it and you see here the blue field now, that is our variable. So you click on it, you click on update and then you have it there. Let's actually quickly do it here, update. But now the value is zero. So right now, if we would enter, our stop loss would be zero. The broker would probably say, that's bullshit. We can't open this trade, trade abundant. So what is happening before? Once per bar, we check this gray block, which is called modifier variables. You find this block right here. So let's quickly double click on it. Let's delete this one. Well, actually let's keep it. I will just show you how you can also recreate the modifier variable block. So here you simply right click again, ATR, because this is the variable we are going to manipulate, modify whatever. And we're gonna make this value the same as the output for the indicator, average true range. We keep the ATR period. And now you see, I also added another time frame. It's not called time frame anymore, but time frame two, because it has to be a unique name, because I don't want to use the same time frame for the price action as I'm doing it for the stop loss. Let's say for the price action, I use daily candlesticks, but for the stop loss, especially for the ATR, it's normally quite advisable to, for example, use the ATR based on one hour or somewhere in that ballpark, right? That's why uh, I was eager to also have my own time frame here and it's for me at least a best practice I preferred to have all time frames I'm using as a constant just for being able to control them later on in the process. So you click simply on update. So that's now the same block so that's why I can delete it. And now this variable ATR is the same value as well the output of the indicator of the ATR based on the ATR period 14. So, so that's why we only need the variable here. And that is the only difference between constants variables because the ATR is changing constantly throughout the whole process. Every second the ATR is fluctuating, you will always have a different kind of value. What do I mean with it? Let's quickly, well, actually I will also just export this one. Okay, let's call it 101. Here you see it. I will copy paste it. I go back to my MT5 platform. I go to my folder structure. I quick and dirty copy paste it. This server currently is on a FTMO, like live, real life uh, money challenge. That's why it's it's a bit uh, it's a bit hectic, but for all purposes, it's just good enough. I will close it. So you know the drill. I click here, right click, click on refresh. You see here the bot is now popping up. So I will go here, double click, visual mode. And what I now expect is that the stop loss will be based on ATR. So that is what I mean. The ATR is changing, how the market is changing, right? So you see pretty much the, how the, the value of the ATR is changing. The stop loss size differentiates with, yeah, the, the, the time of market, like how volatile the market is currently. That is actually the only thing I wanted to show you. Also, just as a side note, as soon as you use indicators in MQL5, it will also, a pop-up will be printed on your charts in MT5 and MetaTrader 5. That just as a side note. And now let me quickly explain one of the last blocks I did not mention yet, which are these red, orange-ish like blocks, which you find here on the chart and objects. They're not doing anything. They are just printing colorful thingies on the charts. So here I use the draw arrow and that is a little trick I would like to teach you to debug your system. For example, especially in the beginning when you build systems or also a bit more sophisticated systems with even more blocks, even though I would recommend to keep it with as few blocks as possible. Sometimes you are like, why is this system not taking any trades? You wonder why is nothing coming here to the end, right? Like sometimes it is just not doing anything. And then you wonder, well, I must have messed up something here in these blocks before. And what you can do, you simply use this arrow block and you, for example, check piece by piece, is this one maybe the blocker? So you export it and as soon as an arrow is being printed, you know, well, this one is the blocker. You see, okay, cool, there's nothing happening. You put it here, right? And then you go just through all these blocks until you realize, Oh, wait a minute, it's not like here, it's still printing the error and here there's no error happening anymore. So like this block must be the blocker right now, right? So that is pretty much how you can debug a system. And yeah, I would like to quickly show to you how the error looks like. So what we do, 
Now we added the arrow here to the very end. Let's quickly delete this one and also this one. So this one is red. That is deactivated. Now it's active, but actually let's keep it deactivated. This one is active. So that means my expectation is as soon as we go along, based on a morning star, there will be also an arrow printed on the candle ID 2 as defined here on the candle law. So let's quickly export this one. Then we call it 102. Cool. So you know the drill. Copy paste. Quick and dirty. We refresh it. We are looking here for the file 102 and we just run it on the one hour because we also have it here time frame let's put it on the one hour time frame so everything is aligning nicely well let's stop it right here here it's short we don't expect an error here we go long so we expect an error two candles before right candle id two that is zero one two candle id error being printed on the candle low and then you go long let's see how it looks so here we go, we have another example and another example, right? We go along, we print an arrow before. So that is just a nice way, like a visually appealing way to yeah, conveniently check if your trading system, your trading idea is doing what it is supposed to do. Or maybe you missed a part somewhere, you made maybe a little mistake or you have to re-elaborate, re-evaluate how to realize your trading idea because maybe there's a blocker somewhere. Cool, quick chat about pending orders some of you might be using the pending order so you simply go here on the buy sell sections and instead of buy now sell now you go on buy pending order sell pending order so what you can do simply deactivate those two connect them like this and then i will just do it here for the long position no, you do not enter straight away, right? So you just get like the green light of all the conditions before. And now you say, well, actually, let's open it on a custom price. Let's open it on, let's say, candle high. Would make sense, right? Because it's a morning star and you expect the price continues and you do not enter directly. You wait for kind of a confirmation. So let's on the candle high of that's a tough one because that's not it does not always make sense right but let's say just like on candle id 5 something like this offset to a zero so that is something where you have to add your own creativity in the end right stop loss mode fixed pips we already learned nope we don't do this so we go to custom price fraction again value no we go to indicator in that case average true range and now here you can also once again add the time frame i mean Oh, you can also use the same as before for the ATR. Take profit. Let's say percentage from stop loss. Here by default is 100% simply means risk to reward of one to one. But maybe you want to make this a constant as well. So I already made this a constant. Here you see target by default is 300. So 300%. So let's say the ATR is set at 50 pips and our take profit would be now 150 pips so when we risk 100 us dollar our maximum upside is 300 our downside is 100 that is what this one is doing we update it and then this one is live cool that much to the pending orders so that is everything i want to show you relating to fx dreamer what we also teach in our community is a workflow and some high level like best practices and approaches what normally is used by statisticians mathematicians and quants but since we don't have the same tools obviously like those big fund managers or like the all of you right so we simply have to make the most out of the tools we have at our hand with the resources we have so instead for going the, for the 100 percent what like the quants professional quants are doing we simply aim to well use with the 20 percent of the tools we have achieving 80 percent of the results that is good enough and the goal of this workflow which we teach is simply having peace of mind because in the end you are trading with your own money or other people money and you really want to make sure that your system is working it's not curve fitted that is something what you for example really really want to try to avoid and i know that is it's a term from statisticians where you have, for example, noise in the market, right? You have many like price points and whatsoever. And when you, let's actually go to an example. So when you backtest, so let's go back to slow complete algorithm and you decide, well, let's simply backtest based on time frame, stop loss, target size. 
you give yourself many opportunities to find a pattern which might be random because of market noise but because you gave yourself so many combinations let's go here with like 500 target 50 right I, I don't know let's just keep it like this so you see like the combinations they're really adding up and then six times 16 times 22 you give yourself 2000 combinations and for sure out of those 2000 combinations, there's going to be one very good one, which is looking with a great equity curve and you have everything what you need in the end. You are like, wow, this is this is the holy grail, right? Because you have high returns, very low drawdown, very likely that in the first run, that is because of curve fitting, because you fit your data perfectly to your trade bot. So there are some best practices we also share in the community to ensure you that you don't do this, simply said. So one of the best practices, let me actually quickly go through it. We also call it the rain check or the monkey test, which is part of it. It's pretty much yeah a back test method developed by us. It's like a high level like process, which I already explained to you before for novice, but also more experienced algorithmic traders to gain a real edge in the market. The rain check provides a robust and reliable way to test and yeah, simply to avoid common pitfalls of curve fitting. These pitfalls of curve fitting can be really, really, really um, expensive. And some of them we painfully had to go through it, but we learned from it and yeah, we documented it for you. So you don't have to do these mistakes yourself. Yeah, by following the rain check, you can confidentially build and test trading strategies that are statistically significant and meaningful. So our method emphasizes a simplified process to validate your system's viability. So I want to really say that it's not the whole grail of method, right? It's one method you can pursue. And I would say it's quite a low effort method simply to get to cover most ground. It's not perfect, but you, you can definitely say when you follow through the process that you did your utmost with the resources you have at your hand. Um, yeah, practical tips, for instance, include not optimizing more than two variables at a time, what I just showed you before, right? You don't really op want to optimize three, four, five, maybe even 10 constants. That is what is often done by scammers. They simply throw in all the constants. They optimize the hell out of it. They create beautiful equity curves. But in the end, that is all complete crap. And uh, as soon as you turn on these <laughs> systems live in the market, equity curve is looking the other way around. Um, yeah, another best practice as well is simply aiming for a ton of trades. So not having a system which is creating like 10 trades in two years. Sample size is relatively low. So what we also recommend is having a ton of trades, simply said. So like 300 trades, 3000 trades in two years, something like this, because then your sample size is much bigger and the checks you can do, which we recommend, will be more reliable as well. What else? Test, yeah, the, all the testing helps you to verify your entry exit strategies, providing a genuine edge over randomness. Yes, indeed, the rain check is more than just a tool. It's a comprehensive approach to elevating your trading strategy to professional standards, helping you avoid common mistakes and achieve consistent, reliable results. Cool. That's it. That's the last part. We also teach and now you also have at least the first some best practices as soon as you get into the stage of like backtesting, optimizing and at least avoiding the very most common pitfalls in the beginning. I know it's a pretty long video and I understand it's a lot of content and especially when you see like these different kind of softwares, right? Maybe you've seen FX Dreamer the first time. It's kind of a clunky software, not so appealing to the eye, but quite efficient. Same for MetaTrader 5. So many buttons, so many features. It's overwhelming in the beginning, but as soon as you like spend a little bit of time on it, like on Excel, on, on Microsoft Excel, you will get a hang on it. And I can just recommend rewatching parts of this video. There are timestamps. So I would definitely recommend like watching it through how you did it right now and then just jumping back and forth and rewatching parts where you were lagging. And if there are any questions, feel free to hit us up, write it in the comment section down below. Looking forward to your thoughts, to your feedback and uh, yeah, see you in the next video. Cheers and goodbye.